This module is about how to help your clients prepare for larger and larger loans. As they grow, they're going to need larger amounts of capital and the bar for qualifying for a loan is going to rise. So how can we prepare them for the next level? We're going to discuss what the underwriting criteria looks like for larger loans. What are the quality indicators for a P&L and a balance sheet? We're going to talk a little bit about personal financial statements and helping you build your capital access program in this area. If your mission is to help larger businesses or to grow businesses into larger businesses that need larger amounts of capital, there are ways you can support businesses to you know, move up the line and qualify at higher levels. So here's some ideas about what needs to happen to qualify for larger loans. It's obviously going to require higher sales and profits. You're going to have to show that excess cash for larger and larger monthly loan payments, as we talked about in previous modules. Cleaner credit report, for sure. Probably a better FICO score, for sure. More years of experience, better documentation. They're not going to forgive sloppy accounting and things like that. And additional requirements for collateral and insurance. I was on a 504 lending board for many years and we always had to have key man life insurance. There's going to be a lot more requirements here as the dollar amount goes up on a loan. So let's look at what this means in terms of our you know, five C's of credit. This cash capacity at 1.25 or higher on the debt service coverage that shows on the P&Ls, they might use some balance sheet analysis as well. And looking back again, two or three years to see what the capacity has been of the business in the past. Collateral, as we've said, it's got to be fixed assets, pretty close that match or exceed even the value of the loan, the loan amount that they're looking for. Credit has got to be clean. We can't have you know bankruptcy, slow pace collections and need a FICO score easily of 680 or higher. And conditions, a stable industry, significant industry experience, and long-term banking relationships. So let's talk a little bit about a profit and loss statement. It is a financial statement that summarizes revenue, costs, and expenses incurred during a fiscal year. Lenders might do a three-year trend analysis on P&Ls. Now, we don't really teach P&Ls in this series, but if you take my advice and do some business bookkeeping, you'll learn a lot more about P&Ls and you'll be able to do this analysis yourself. So what are some of the quality indicators a lender might look for on a P&L? So certainly if they're doing this trend analysis, they'll say, we want to see growing sales. So that sales three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, we want to see that growth year upon year. They'll want to see cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales, stable or falling. So they're going to want to make sure that the gross margins are, again, stable or growing. They want to see overhead as a percentage of sales, stable or falling. Now, there's some exceptions to that, depending on what's going on in the business. But basically, they want to see that overhead is controlled. And they'll want to see net profit in terms of dollars and as a percentage of sales growing, if possible. Balance sheets. So a balance sheet is a snapshot of a business's financial condition. Our young and small businesses are likely not to have a balance sheet. But if your client is wanting to qualify for more and more capital, having an accurate balance sheet is going to be part of the package. So it is a source and use statement where a company gets its funds in terms of liabilities and net worth and how a company uses its funds in terms of assets. It shows how well a company manages its assets and liabilities and where the business's cash is. And lenders might do a three-year balance sheet trend analysis when underwriting larger loans. And again, I'll have resources for you in the next module on how you can learn to do some of this analysis yourself on a balance sheet. Balance sheets are more complicated financial statements. They're certainly not as intuitive as a P&L. But when I got trained on balance sheet analysis, I remember thinking, wow, this is pretty cool. So here's some of the quality indicators that people who know how to read balance sheets can see. How much cash is available in the business by looking at cash in the bank, savings, and lines of credit. They can look at retained earnings. Over time, they want to see retained earnings as positive and growing. They can look at total equity. Again, they want to see that positive and growing in the business. Debt to equity and liquidity ratios and see if they're within industry norms. They can do operating cycle and permanent working capital analysis to see, again, if it's in industry norms. They can look at days receivable, inventory payables, and accruals and do a whole analysis on that. 
And again, as I said, look at permanent working capitals. But as I said, these are hard documents to create and have accurate because there's a lot of accounts over there that a lot of small businesses don't track well. So again, your first job is to learn about this. And then your next job is to start figuring out how to create services that can help your clients start stepping into this balance sheet world. So personal financial statement is required for larger loans. And it's like a personal balance sheet. And it includes basic information about, you know, name, address, spouses, and so on. But it also lists all sources of income. It lists assets. It lists liabilities. It lists property owned. It has a lot of different sections. And there's lots of examples online. And I'll show you one on our next slide. I know there's one that the SBA has that they use for their loan programs. Most clients need help filling these out. Again, balance sheets are hard and a personal financial statement is basically a balance sheet. Again, most clients are going to need your help with this regardless. So let's get started and just look at SCORE's example, which is available for download as part of this series. So here is the personal financial statement in an Excel document provided by SCORE, which is one of the business development services offered by the SBA. And I just sort of want to walk you through, not in detail, but just the sections on here. So it starts out at the top with some basic personal information. And then if we get down on line seven, we start in with assets, which is, you know, as you can see, cash, personal property, retirement funds, real estate, and other assets. So even filling out the very first section would take some work because you'd have to identify all those assets and value all those assets. You have to know what the market value is for all of them. So that's the first section. The next section is liabilities where all current debt, loan payments, tax returns payable, and other types of liability are listed. And the best way to fill this out is to pull a credit report and make sure you list all the accounts that are listed on the credit report in this section, total them up. Then we go into some details. So the top part is a summary of assets and liabilities. And then the bottom section here is details of it. So you can see that there's a lot of lines here line, on line 45 now, notes and contracts held, name of securities. It, this gets pretty complicated. <laughs> Stocks privately held in companies, real estate. So a lot of details there about the value and outstanding balance on all your assets. I mean, it makes my head swim a little bit to fill this all out. This would be a big homework job for a lot of us, right? To fill this all out. Then after you do all your assets, you go into liabilities. Now this one actually might be a little easier if you pull the credit report because you can just pull this information off the credit report perhaps a little more easily than the asset section where you detail out what the status is of every single loan. And that gets you through line 100. Now some personal financial statements have other sections like you have to list all your sources of income and there, there can be additional sections to this. So this is actually somewhat simplified, but this could be a starting place or you can, again, take this form and simplify it. You can look at the SBA personal financial statement and start making some decisions with yourselves amongst your staff. Like how are we going to get our clients to step into this and what kinds of support do we need to get them to fill out this very detailed document? So if you watch the modules from the last chapter, which is how to put your client's best foot forward in a loan application, and this module on helping clients step into larger loans, I think you can see that it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of skills, a lot of documents, all that kind of thing. So this slide is really, we're talking about how do you help people tackle this kind of large range of things they need to tackle to succeed at capital access. So the truth is most clients are going to need a series of capital access services. They're going to need different classes or different inputs at different stages to pull a loan application together successfully. And then as they move up into larger and larger loan sizes, that's going to require different services as well. So you may need one set of services for startups and microloans and one set of services for your larger businesses that are looking for larger amounts of capital. And this, to some degree, might depend on what your mission is as your organization. If you are helping disadvantaged communities, you might really focus on the micro lending end of all this, this series of uh, trainings on capital access. 
Or you might have a mission that's more about job creation, in which case generally the job creation organizations are going to focus on larger businesses that are growing and creating jobs. And that's where this module in particular is starting to suggest where kind of services are needed to do that kind of lending. So I just suggest that you look at what your mission is, what your current resources are, look at all the information and skills and knowledge that are presented in this series and start designing services that begin to make that bridge between what your mission is, what your clients need, and how you can fill that gap with knowledge and services at your organization. So you may want to create a plan where you assess what's needed, what skills are on hand, what your current services are, where the gap is, and is it going to require training? Is the staff going to need to do some training? Do you need to invest in some resources? It could take time to plan all this and develop it. So I just encourage you to have those discussions and take the time to build a plan. Barriers to capital is is one of the things that keeps the people we want to serve often unable to step into their dreams, grow their businesses, and, and make more money. Our last module of the series is for you, either if you're a lender or a business development organization, and it's resources for you to develop your skills and build your services in this area. 